With that being said, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll jump into our worship service. So God, thank you for all you've given us. Thank you for a great time that we can have tonight in the study of your word and the worshiping of you. And I do thank you as we think about this week, the crucifixion and the love that you've shown upon the cross of Calvary. Thank you for that. Thank you for the gift of salvation. We love you. Just now I pray. Amen. With that being said, a couple of songs in regards to that. Uh, Let's sing this power in the blood. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. And there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Aren't you glad there is power in the blood? Uh, my sister and my mom um, and our churches that we grew up in, they used to sing. Um, I hadn't tipped my mind till I said that part. They used to sing, um, I claim the blood um, that Jesus shed oh, uh, for the uh, power in my life. I'm glad there's power in the blood of Jesus. Let's sing this song. We don't often do two songs on Sunday night, but we'll sing another one. It's called Jesus Messiah. He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. 
love so amazing love so amazing Jesus Messiah name above all names blessed Redeemer Emmanuel Rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. His body the bread, His blood the wine. Broken and poured out all for love. The horror trembled and the veil was torn. The so amazing. The so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, all our hope is in you, all our hope is in you, all the glory. Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, He's Lord of all. Jesus Messiah, He's Lord of all. He is King of Kings and Lord of of the Lord's Ecclesiastes chapter 10. We are nearing end of this book. Uh, we will almost get through this chapter. Um, we're going to stop on chapter on verse 15 and we'll finish 16 through 20 um, can I, in two weeks from to, tonight. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verses 1 through 15 is where we are. Here is the title of the message, hello, my name is foolishness. And so we're going to look at some things in this passage, in these, in these 15 passages, in these 15 verses of this passage, that Solomon says, this is showing you that this person is a fool. He is uh, giving you examples. He is showing you that he is a fool and he does not care. He just keeps on doing what he wants to do. So we're going to start with verse number one. Um, we'll look at this thought. Verse one, dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth the little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and 
in uh, honor. Number one, we're going to see this, that his name is a name of disgrace. It's interesting that he puts it in this way, but foolishness disgraces one's honor and reputation. Just because you think highly of yourself or you think something or you say with words something, they can tell by your actions that it doesn't match up that you are a fool. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary, that would be perfume, to sail forth a stinking savor. Is perfume supposed to smell good, yes or no? Well, yes, that's the idea. That is the point. Now, there is some cologne out there that, that uh, is on the market that smells like money or smells like leather. It smells like a workbench, whatever the case may be, sawdust. But perfume is supposed to smell nice, but dead flies, what do dead flies cause that perfume to smell like? It stinks. Yeah, it's that, it's that smell. Have you ever opened milk that was in your fridge and you already have your cereal? How many put your cereal first and then the milk? Who does milk and sit in cereal? Okay, good. We're all normal here. So you have the bowl with the cereal in it. You go in the fridge. You open up. You go, whoa. Anybody done that before? Never? Anybody drank the milk after that? I have. Yes, I have definitely done that. You know, but, you, but, but nowadays, we go through milk long before it ex expires. And so, but the idea is something that's supposed to smell good, something small, a dead fly, causes it to stink. Foolishness is like dead flies and perfume. No matter, that's supposed to be a how, not a who. Apparently, my fingers don't know how to spell the how. It decided to spell who. No matter how nice it is, it stinks. No matter how much you pay for it, it stinks. No matter how it's supposed to smell, it still stinks. Verse 1 reminds us that even small things have consequences in life. In a fool's life, uh, the small acts, the small, the small things makes things seem to stink. Verses 2 through 3. A wise, man heart, a wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is at his left. We'll get back to that. Verse 3, Yea, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth him, and he saith to everyone that he is a fool. The, there's a common saying that says, it is better for someone to think you a fool than to open your mouth and prove them right. Something to that uh, effect. Because once that happens, everyone knows you're a fool. And this fool is not foolishness like, oh, that boy's just being foolish. He jumped off the roof onto into the pool or do the foolish things that people do. This is talking about ignorance on purpose. They are just, for lack of better words, it has the idea in Proverbs, it has the idea, forgive my English language here, the idea of stupidity, that he is willingly dumb, doesn't want wisdom, doesn't want knowledge. He is fine being ignorant, fine being uh, 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 clueless about life. Verses 2 and 3 show us this, foolishness in the disgrace that it comes with can't be hidden. You cannot hide the foolishness. That's part of the disgrace about it. The fool cannot. Uh, we look at people, and sometimes you look at politicians, you hear them talk and speak, and you think, that's they're fools. That's just foolishness. Or you hear a debate. I don't care what it's about. And you think, oh, that's just foolishness. I can't believe he would say such things. Foolishness can't be hidden. So go back to verse 2. 
the right hand and left hand. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but then it says, but a fool's heart at his left or at his left hand. What does that mean? Right says it this way. Right and left are natural symbols for the strong and good on the on the one hand, and for the weak and bad on the other hand. The Latin word for sinister means left. So the right hand is considered, the back then, the dominant powerful hand. So that's why it's saying a wise man's heart is at his right hand. It is his power. His wisdom is his strength. His wisdom is what helps him. But a fool's heart is in the left hand. There is no strength in that. It is sinister to him. A, 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 a wise man's heart is known as a strength to him. That's the idea. But if you look at a fool, is his wisdom a strength of his? Absolutely not. It's actually his weakness. You do not go to a fool for advice. I would not pick on anybody at this point. I'm being nice. Let's say there was a man. I almost said Bob. We have a Bob in our church. I cannot say Bob. Let's say... Uh, um, let's say uh, Leo. I don't know a Leo. So Leo is here, and he is a fool by his actions. Now, do fools know that they are fools per se? Not really. They will still want you to come to them for advice because they think that they have the answers. They think that they know. So here is Leo. And here, everybody knows he is a fool. Would you go to him for advice? Well, no. You would not. You would choose not to because that's not his strength. But let's say that here is so-and-so. I can't think of another name. So-and-so, and he is wise. In fact, he doesn't talk much. But everybody who goes to him asks advice, and it's always good advice. Who would you choose? The one whose strength is that. For instance, let's say that I want to uh, um, work on cars to fix my car. Let's say that Bernie has no idea about cars. Only thing he knows is this is left, this is right, this is go, and that is stop. And park, drive, reverse, neutral. That's all he knows. That would be my type of language. But then here is Jim, and he knows everything about every car. He can do it blindfolded, take it down, put it together, his eyes closed. I have an issue with my car. Even though maybe I am more friends with him than him, who should I go to for advice? The one who has the smarts about it, right? That's the, the, the idea. That, that a fool would say, no, I'm going to go to the fools for advice. Or they say, why not come to me for the advice? His wisdom is in his left hand. It's a sinister to him. The... This is not true of a fool. His heart is on the left. The fool shows everyone that he is a fool. Have you ever gone to a conference or something and you have those name tags that says, hello, my name is, and you have to wear that name tag? Does anybody enjoy those name tags? I hate those name tags. I feel like, you know, I've, how many of you have ever put the, a, a wrong name just because? Okay, good. Y'all are not fools. But I've always wanted to, just to mess with people. Because I hate wearing anything. I don't, I don't like wearing name tags, those types of things. I was glad when, ta when, ta when Taco Bell said, you no longer have to wear name tags. I'm like, yay, I just don't like that. Now that I don't care if people know my name, I just don't want my name to be, hello, my name is this. A fool would be like this. Not only do I not mind wearing it, I want it this big, bold letters, and lights up. My name is Fool. Hello. My name is Fool. Hello. My name is Fool. Hey, what's your name? My name is Fool. That's the idea. You think, why would they care? 
Because they are fools. Why would they do such things? They are fools. The fool shows, in verse number 3 it says, and he saith to everyone that he is a fool by his actions. Verses 4 through 7. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place, for yielding pacifieth great, excuse me, offenses. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceedeth from the, ru the, the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Interesting. I'm not saying that we are living in that age. I'm not, I wouldn't say such things. But it seems like sometimes that people who shouldn't be in leadership are in leadership. And those who we think should be in leadership or not. They consider to be the lowly of them. Verses 4 through 7 is this. Even in disgrace, foolishness can be promoted. And what do we say with that? That's not fair. Why would you? Can't you not see that this person is a fool? Can't you see what they're doing? Can't you see their destruction? Can't you see this? Or forget the uh, political part that Psalm is talking about, but, but have you ever seen a friend be close friends with a fool, and you say, hey, it's probably not wise to constantly hang out with this person, and they say, what? And you think, can't you not see? Even in disgrace, foolishness can be promote, promote, promoted. The idea is this in verse 4, the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place, for yielding pacifieth great offenses. Be faithful in your position no matter what until God moves you from that position. Although unfair, fools are promoted sometimes and wise men are demoted. Does it seem unfair? Yes, but we are still to be faithful to what God has called us to do, although sometimes life under the sun seems very unfair when it comes to this part. Don't let this deter you from choosing wisdom. How many people have seen and or how many times has foolishness been spouted out consistently, continually, and next thing we know, foolishness is the norm, and that becomes what is accepted. And we look back and think, how did we get here? Y'all, cra crazy. What is easy for us is to just hop on the bandwagon. I guess to keep things easy in life, I'll just agree to, keep, to do what people want. That's not what Psalm is saying. Don't let the demotion of the wise and the promotion of fools deter us from still choosing wisdom, still doing the right thing. Now, verses 8 through 20 will give us this. There's a name of disgrace. We see that a fool is disgraceful, but now we're going to see in the next part, in the last part here, a name of evidence. A name, or so I say 8 through 15, a name of evidence. It is going to be shown, some is going to give examples of what a fool would do now some of the examples that he gives as i was reading it again and typing it out i thought to myself i have actually done that same exact thing and i'm like man that was foolish i can't believe i would I, I, i'll get to that point in a minute but i was like boy those examples are not just random examples it's actual things that are the fullest way of living life so Verses 8 
through 10. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. That's not the one that I did. Okay. And whoso breaketh in the hedge, a serpent shall bite him. I've not been bit by a serpent. Whoso removeth stones shall be hurt therewith. And he that cleaveth wood shall be in danger thereby. If the iron be blunt, and he not wet the edge, then must he put more strength, but wisdom is profitable to direct. People can tell who the fool is because of the overwhelming evidence. You can look at two people, watch their lives, and think, I'm watching their actions. Evidence shows you are guilty of being a fool. You can see it in their lives. But what can we not see sometimes? Those same evidences in our lives. That there's some things that we do that somebody may say, well, that's full foolish. Why would you choose that? Why would you do that? 8 through 10 tell us this, that the evidence can be seen in their actions and what they do. My dad used to say this, what goes around comes around. Anybody heard that before? All the time. I would go, I won't do this to you, but Bernie. I would, the older I got, I'd be a teenager. And we used to uh, wrestle and fight and that kind of stuff. And so we had this ha habit that you wouldn't bend over when anybody was close by. Because if you bent over to pick up something, we would go, wham, almost as hard as we can. And so my dad was bending over, I was a teenager, to get something, and I went, wham. And, and we would laugh and stuff, but the older I got, my hits were a whole lot harder than when I was a kid. As a kid, like, oh, that's funny, I'm going to get you. But as a teenager, he's like, oh. And then he, I was faster than him. And then he would say something like this. I would hit him. I would like, I'm just joking. I'm not trying to hurt. I'm just picking around. You know, I'm not knowing how bad it hurts until now that my kids do something like that. I'm like, oh, now I know how it feels. And he would say this with a smile on his face. What comes around goes around. I'm like, whatever, Dad. <laughs> it could have been two days, three days, four days, five days. I would bend over and he would light me up. And I'm like, what was that for? He says, son, what comes around goes around. Oh, yeah. I remember that. No, we would just pick on that's the idea. Or it's the law of the boomerang, right? Anybody know how to throw a boomerang? I got one. Cheap one. Yeah, go out, go out into the yard, throw it. It goes, poof. Like in the movies, that's not what happens. You throw it, it goes, whoop, like this. Of course, if you know how to throw it, it'll come back to you. That's the, uh, the, the idea. Or the New Testament says, you reap what you sow. That's the idea that you see it by the actions. Verse 8 and 9. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. He that does this will happen to him. He tries to do this, it happens to them. An example of this would be an Esther by a, name, by a man by the name of Haman, right? What did he build? A gallows. Who was he wanting to hang from the gallows? The Jews or Mordecai, right? But who eventually hung from the gallows? Haman did. You get what's coming to you. You reap what you sow. Haman is a good example of that. The fool will, con this is the part that I'm guilty of. The fool will continually use a dull axe instead of sharpening the edge. He rather use more strength and more time than use wisdom. I will do this with a weed eater instead because I hated changing out the uh, string because now they make them. We can just pop them in, poof, poof, little strips of them, poof, poof, put them in. 
But back in the day, and they still have them, I guess, that you would have to wind it up, put it through, pop it in, push it like this. You know, I mean, it just took too much time. I'm from the south. It's hot. There's flies all around. And so I would just use that much string and get all the way there, not caring. But if I put new string on it, it would be a whole lot faster. That's the idea with, chop with chopping wood. He's saying if you use an axe, eventually that blade becomes dull. A fool says, who cares? I'm just going to use a dull axe and just do more strength. The, uh, Solomon says to be wiser to stop what you're doing, sharpen that edge, and continue to work. People would say, work smarter, not harder. I had a, had a guy who I worked with said, work from the neck up, which means use this more than this. No, that's the, uh, the idea. A fool like, no, I'm just going to go at it. And so that's so use wisdom. When you look at somebody, the older you get, you would say a wise way of doing that would be to do this. F.B. Meyer made a helpful application to the Christian worker uh, of this by analogy. And here what it is. There are times with all who work for God when they are blunt through many usage. Have you ever been or felt like that sometimes? Boy, God's just really working me. Boy, I've just been through the, the grinder. I've just been through it. God's really put me through some things, and I don't feel as sharp as I once was. At, at all such times, let us turn to God and say, put in more strength. Let thy power be magnified in my weakness. Give more grace so that thy work shall not suffer. Surely more work is done by blunt edge and divine power than by a sharp edge and little power. That he said, I want God to sharpen my edge. Me not take the work. Let God work through me or I'll use this analogy how many times have we been working for for the Lord and maybe become dull or maybe become worn out and tired instead of asking God for strength we continue to push on in our own strength and would not as effective as we once were or, or should be because we don't have the power or the edge that we ought, ought to have and Solomon says that is a fool you cannot work in such ways verses 11 through 14 surely the serpent will bite without enchantment. <laughs> and a babbler is no better. A serpent will bite without enchantment. Anybody ever been snake bit before? Okay, just asking. I'm doing all of these things. I'm keeping a log of, 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 of you so that I know all the information that I can from your lives. Just kidding. Not doing that. But, uh, but, uh, so... It says that a serpent doesn't have to be enticed to be for you to bite. If you put your hand down and that serpent thinks that you are the threat, what's going to happen? You're going to be bit. I've actually been bit. Oh, I have been once by a snake. Um, and we were living in Georgia on 10 acres of land and uh, on the back porch. Uh, we, I go as we normally do. And uh, I go to, un to, un to unlock the back door. I grab the doorknob and I feel this on my hand. I'm like, well, that was weird. It was a baby snake wrapped around the door handle. And I did had no uh, idea. And of course, it didn't get me. I mean, I just saw a couple of marks. No, no big deal. It wasn't poisonous or anything. But I thought to myself, boy, if that had been something big, I would never have known. Now, I did work. I think it was about 100 acres, Venture of Faith was, the camp that I worked at. And one summer, we probably killed 15 plus moccasins. It was just cotton mouse here, cotton, cotton mouse there. I stepped on a couple of snakes out there, you know, going to in the bathhouse and stuff. So I've seen them a, a lot. I've killed plenty of them. I don't know if I should say that out loud or not. But I, I killed plenty of, of them. Um, we've had them. Um, dropping canoes 
I mean, I've, I've seen them in, in, the, in the water, all those kinds of things. I don't swim in ponds because of that. I have no idea what snake could be in that pond. Um, but out, 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 out here, there's probably not a big threat of that. Um, thank the Lord for that. But it doesn't matter. A snake can bite without being teased. For instance, a good dog will only bite if it's forced to, 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 to bite. A snake, not so much. It will bite because it's a snake and you are close if it feels threatened at all. So therefore, a fool, he says, just like a snake can bite at any time, a fool, verse number uh, 11, and a babbler is no bad, bad, better. The more a fool talks at any time, the fool can cause destruction with his mouth. More words, more you have to give an account for. The more chances there, there is of saying something you should not say. Verse number 12. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. He, uh, he, basically, it says the lips of the fool, or his words, will make himself um, what we would call eat crow. And, um, that his words would come back to him, like, oh, psh, or put my foot in my mouth. Those types of things. Verse number 13. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. Uh, he says that it starts bad and only gets worse. Verse four, 14, a fool also is full of words, and a man cannot tell what shall be, and what shall be after him, or who can tell him. The idea is he's full of words, but it means nothing. Have you ever heard somebody, do not give examples of this out loud. Anybody heard somebody speak before, and you think, boy, that was a long talk. What did he say? Well, that was a, a long time of listening. Now, what exactly was said? What was the point in that? Have you ever been in a conversation before? And you just listen, and you smile, listen and smile. At the end of the conversation, you think, I have no idea what that person was talking about. It made absolutely no sense at, at all. The idea is this, verses 11 through 14, that their disgrace, the evidence it can be seen in their words, not only in their actions. You can watch a fool live its life and see that it's a fool. You can listen to a fool talk, and you can know that is a fool. Many words in a fool's mouth is dangerous. That is why my dad used to say, I know you've heard this. God gave you two ears and one mouth so you can listen twice as much as you talk. It's sometimes just to be quiet. A fool will talk about a subject he has no idea what the subject is about. And he thinks himself to be a professor or professional at the subject that he is speaking about. Many words in a fool's mouth is dangerous. Dean says this, the word for fool here is seikau, which implies a dense, confused thinker. Ignorant, dumb, uh, somebody who just doesn't want to use the brain that God gave them. It is, it, is, it is implied that it's on purpose. It's a choice. I choose not to think. That's why at a young age, I'm glad that mom and dad forced me to think through some things. And not just say, oh, well, whatever it happens. No, I need to solve issues, solve problems. Like I said, I like, I guess it's part of the math thing. That's why I like math. I like to solve issues, solve problems. And that's why I like to teach too. I like to say, hey, there's an issue there. How can I help fix the, the, the issue? Uh, we had an episode ha happen at the, at, at the shop. And... Uh, and uh, I'm glad there were people there who could help the, is the, the issue. Someone um, uh, was walking by in the mall, inside the mall, 
pass out shop, had a seizure, passed out, hit their head and fell into our wall, put a bigger hole in the wall. We heard from the inside, we thought somebody like, was being mis mischievous and fighting out there. They come running out and I'm in. And so me, I have no knowledge of what to do outside of common sense, but some people there have had practice with this because they have used to it with their kids when their kids were grow, 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 growing up. And so they use their knowledge to help. And what was interesting, I praise this teen teenager for, do, for do, do, doing this because not all teens are as sharp at that age and mature as, as, as this kid was. This, this teenager was sitting on, in, on the table and watched the scenario, watched her, could tell that something's not right, sees her fall, o fall over, goes to her immediately, calls 911, and is as calm as a cucumber on the phone trying to answer questions, not always hearing the question, but she wasn't like, oh, come, come on, you know, she, I was like, wow, good for you. And then when the medical people got there, they were relaying pertinent information to the medical team. I was like, wow, what a great thing that these people, these teenagers were not fools. They were thinking and solving issues that came to, to them. In this case, the opposite would be true. The, the opposite would be some people saw the, scenar the, scenar the scenario and said, I don't know what to do. What should I do? I don't know. Has anybody ever in school heard this, stop, drop, and roll? Has anybody ever used that? Right, never have. But it was pounded in our heads. Why? So that we didn't, so we would know what to do. We could think through, through the process. Has anybody ever been in quicksand? Does anybody know what happens when you, when, if you are in quicksand? What? Right, but what, how, how, how do you solve the issue? Anybody know? You lay, you lay, you lay down. That's it, you push it, lay, lay back. It was preached to us. I have never seen quicksand much less been in quicksand. But that's the idea, the, the, the idea is to relax and lay back. That's what was taught to us. All these things, I'm like, I've never used those things, but why was it taught to us? So we could think through situations, not say, well, I'll just give, 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 give up. I'm a done or I'm done for. That's what a fool does. We'll keep on going. Verse number 15, the last verse we'll look at. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. <laughs> the labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. The idea is this. He has no direction in life. He is at point A and does not how to know how to get to point B and can't figure it out. So everybody says, what's wrong with you? I don't want to ride with you or walk with you. The idea is this, that the evidence can be seen not only in the words and actions, but also in their work. Fools hate work. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. So he goes out to work, but does not know how to get back. They do not understand that it is wise to work now to prepare for the future. That now is the time to work so you know you have things. Remember what Joseph said to Pharaoh when he gave the interpretation of the dream. And he says, do you want to know how you can solve this issue? During the seven years of plenty, what did Joseph tell him to do? To a store. So don't use it all now. Don't just party every night. Store it up so in seven years of famine, you have enough. And in fact, as a nation, as a, con as a, con as a country, other people will know you have food and you can be even richer because you can sell them 
the extra food that you have. The fool would say, oh, we have plenty. Let's just eat, 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 even though they know that they may need that in the future. The fool has no sense of direction, no sense in life. No goals in life. Their lives have no sense of direction and no sense of goals. I don't know what to do. Where should I go? What should, what should, what should happen? I am not saying that everybody who doesn't know their next step in life is a fool. But a fool has no direction and no goal and doesn't want to know the next goal or direction. Or does not, it's not asking God to, to for wisdom and insight and direction in their lives. So the idea is this. Choose the name of wisdom. Guess what? We don't have to claim ourselves to be fools or wise. People who watch us can do that. But the question is this. Have you ever been called a fool because of what you believe in? Well, the world has said, you're fools. Why would you believe that? Our name is given to us by our actions, by those who are believers in Christ as well. I'm not saying that we should live a life so the world would call us wise and not fools. The world would definitely call us fools because we choose the wisdom of God. And that is what Solomon is preaching through this whole book. It's choose God's wisdom, not the world's wisdom. And when we do that, our actions, our words, everything in life will be evidence that we are using God's wisdom and we are not uh, fools. Let's pray to God. Thank you for all you've given us. Thank you for the time that we can come and look at uh, the book of Ecclesiastes and Solomon giving us some help and, 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 and knowing how to act and uh, giving us some guidance in how we ought to live our lives. I pray that we have listened and the Holy Spirit has spoken to us and we have obeyed. We love you, Justine. I pray. Amen.